Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are going to have a look at the ideal Rankine cycle and how to go about modeling it in Python using Jupyter Notebook and the Pyromat Python library. Let's get started. So we are going to look at how we can go and calculate all the points in the ideal Rankine cycle. Here is an example problem of the ideal Rankine cycle where we need to determine the efficiency of a Rankine cycle using steam as the working fluid in which the condenser pressure is 10 kilopascal and the boiler pressure is 2 megapascal and the steam leaves the boiler as saturated vapor. You can see at the bottom there's a picture it starts off at the intake of the pump at point 1 at 10 kilopascal that is the pressure of the condenser and then it gets pumped to point two the water gets pressurized it gets sent through the boiler at a pressure of two megapascal and then the boiler outlet is point three then it enters the turbine work is extracted from the fluid and it gets dumped back into the condenser now we are going to use a python library called pyromat we need to initiate pyromat and configure its units so we can say we can import pyromat as PM and then we can have a look at the default units that it is currently using and if we have a look we can see the default pressure is set to a hundred kilopascal and the temp unit temperature is in Kelvin and that's set to 298.15 and the unit energy is kilojoule and the mass is in kilograms so all the units are correct for our purposes we are fine we are happy with that. Next, we are going to go and get multi-phase water and we are going to get its properties from the Pyromat library by just saying pm.get multi-phase H2O. Now to solve this ideal Rankine cycle, we can consider each element of the Rankine cycle in isolation. So the pump, the boiler, the turbine and the condenser we can look at individually and we can calculate the upstream and downstream values of pressure, temperature and enthalpy for those components one at a time. We're going to start off with the pump. We can assume that the water being received by the pump from the condenser is saturated liquid and then thus its quality X is equal to zero. We also know from the problem statement that P1 is 10 kilopascal and P2 is 2 megapascal. So we can input that as P1 equals 10 and P2 equals 2000. Next, we need to calculate the work required by the pump and we can do that by saying that the work required by the pump equals the specific volume multiplied by the change in pressure. Now we are assuming that saturated liquid is incompressible, thus the volume will not change with the increase in pressure. So V will be one value. We can calculate the specific volume which is the inverse of density and by saying that V equals one divided by the density and we can get the density by using the pyramid library. That's multiphase dot density at the saturation temperature, saturation point. And for the saturation properties, we only need one value. So we're going to use P equals P1 and the first element when it is a saturated liquid. If we would input one in there, it will give us the specific volume when it's a saturated steam. So we want it at saturated liquid. That is why it's the first element zero. We've got all the values necessary to calculate the work required by the pump. So we can run this cell and the work required by the pump is two kilojoules per kilogram. Now knowing the work required by the pump, we can go and we can calculate H2 enthalpy value after the pump and we can say h2 equals h1 plus the work done by the pump. Now we do not know what is h1 so we need to go and calculate h1. And h1 is the multiphase water hs so the enthalpy at the saturation line again we're going to use p1 and it's the first unit because we are using saturated liquid. If we run this cell now you can see that h2 is 193.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Right, so that is the pump done. We've got all our properties for before and after the pump. We managed to calculate the work required by the pump to pressurize the water. Now we can consider the boiler. 
the water leaves the boiler a saturated steam and thus or saturated vapor and then we can we can thus say that the quality of the vapor is equal to one it's not superheated yet so it's not above one there is no water left is all just vapor so that is why we can say x equals one we know that pressure three the pressure after the boiler is equal to the pressure before the boiler because it's a constant pressure process and thus we can also go and calculate the enthalpy after the boiler and that is equal to multiphase dot enthalpy on the saturation line for p3 p equals p3 and this time it will be for saturated vapor and that's why you're using the second element once we've calculated the enthalpy value after the boiler we can see what is the heat input by the boiler into the working fluid and we can say that the heat of the boiler equals the difference in enthalpy values which is h3 minus h2 and we can go and we can run this cell and you can see the heat input by the boiler is 2604.5 kilojoules per kilogram so that is the amount of energy put in by the boiler next we consider the turbine so we know as the steam passes through the turbine the pressure drops and it drops back to the pressure of the condenser so we know that the pressure at point four equals the pressure at point one, which is our condenser pressure of 10 kilopascal. We also know that the enthalpy stays constant in this ideal Rankine cycle. So S4 is equal to S3. We haven't calculated S3 yet, so we can quickly go and calculate that. So S3 equals multiphase water, and that is the enthalpy at the saturation line for saturated vapor, again, using the pressure and this will be for saturated vapor thus we're using one so we've got s3 we know s3 um, s4 equals to s3 because in the ideal Rankine cycle um, enthalpy before and after the turbine is exactly the same and now we need to go and determine the quality of this multi-phase water after it's exited the turbine because it will be a combination of water and steam now to do that we need to use a function in pyramat in pyramat where we can say the quality of this multiphase water x is equal to multiphase water and we are going to calculate the temperature using entropy and we're going to say s equals x4 and p equals p4 and we are going to ask for it to return the quality as well and that is the second value in the array it will return so this will return the quality for us now once the quality of steam is known we can calculate the enthalpy of the water after exiting the turbine h4 that's multi-phase water dot h and that will be pressure p is pressure 4 and we've got the quality that we've just gen um, calculated and we can input that as one of the parameters to calculate enthalpy now that we know the enthalpy of the working fluid after the turbine we can go and calculate the work that has been extracted by the turbine from the working fluid and that is the difference in enthalpy so that will be h3 minus h4 now we can run this cell and the work generated by the turbine is 791.7 kilojoules per kilogram finally the only element left in the ideal Rankine cycle is the condenser and we need to calculate the heat that has been rejected by the condenser in cooling the working fluid down from a quality that is a combination of vapor and fluid if we have a look here we can quickly just print x to see what that is we can see that 0 0.76 is the quality of the multi-phase water so it now needs when it enters the condenser it needs to go back to saturated liquid so what is the heat that is going to be pulled out from the working fluid by the condenser to get this x value back to zero and we can easily calculate that by the heat rejected by the condenser is again the difference in enthalpy and we know the value of h4 the working fluid just as it exits the turbine as well as before it enters the pump to repeat the whole process and run this and we can see the heat rejected by the condenser is 1814.8 kilojoules per kilogram so a lot of heat rejected 
by the complete insert. Now that we know all the values of the work put in by the pump to get the, the, the fluid pressurized, the heat that went in to the boiler to get it heated up, the work pulled from the working fluid by the turbine, as well as the heat rejected by the condenser to get the word water back to saturated liquid. Knowing all this, we can now go and determine the efficiency of this ideal Rankine cycle. To do that, we are going to use the thermal efficiency equation of the net work that's been extracted from the cycle divided by the heat put into the system. We have both these values, so we can see that the efficiency equals the work, the net work, that is the work pulled out by the turbine or the work extracted from the working fluid by the turbine minus the work required to turn the pump to pressurize the fluid and that is divided by the heat that we put into the working fluid by the boiler. Now we can run this and we can say thermal efficiency is 0.3% then we just need to go and multiply that by 100. And the thermal efficiency of this Rankine cycle is 30.3%. And that is how you use the Pyromat Python library to calculate an ideal Rankine cycle without any superheating or reheating. Ideally, we would, would like now to see what happens if we add superheating, if we add reheat to the system, how does the thermal efficiency increase? And that is something that we're going to leave for the next video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Bye.